All right, hey, people. Huh. Wait a second. Give me a second. Why is this not blowing? Yeah, that's kind of weird. All right, hey, people. Welcome back to my stream. Uh, no cam today. Uh, as expected, uh, I was actually... As expected from yesterday that I felt tired, it was a sign I was actually sick. And lo and behold, this morning I was actually had a fever and all, had a really nasty migraine. And I wouldn't say I'm 100% feeling better right now. And actually, instead of the usual stream, I just want to record it. So if I feel like I need to take a pause in the middle, I will. <coughs> but <coughs> it's like 6 p.m. So it's almost like the usual time. Anyway, let's get started for today's uh, playthrough. Lunch and science. There's a trail of excitement now, in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. True, both Emmy and Rin are still my friends, but Emmy has become more than that now. Rin is back at her in her usual spot on the roof. Almost as if she'd never been absent. Feeling better, I take it? A raised eyebrow is my reward for speaking. Better than what? Um, better than you felt yesterday. Ren gives me a que my question, some serious thought. I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for some of yesterday, but it's all fuzzy. Too much cold medicine? Well, I was asleep, and that usually is pretty good. But I can't remember what it feels like to be asleep, because I'm not conscious for it. It's a real problem. Then again, if I knew how good it felt, I might not be sleep I'm, I might not sleep anymore. But this way, I keep trying, so I guess that's how I can keep from being overtired. An eternal mystery to keep you sleeping at night? Maybe mystery is the wrong word. Intangibility might be the proper way to describe it. I see. No, I don't see it. Don't see at all. I have no idea what she's talking about, but that's okay, since I rarely do. Do you remember what sleep fe sleeping feels like? Like yesterday? Do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, I actually didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. Hmm. Maybe that's because you remember subconsciously. Actually, I think I was worrying about Emmy. Doesn't Emmy worry enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gave me a pause. True, but would she ask for help if she needed it? Rin frowns, and I raise an eyebrow. Will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is there something she should be asking for help with? Her leg, for starters. That seems to catch Rin's interest. Leg? It's her, but she won't see the nurse about it. Rin shakes her head in disapproval. You had to make her. Like, she makes me go to class for her own good. Otherwise, she could lose her legs again, and that's just too weird. Losing things twice. Especially if you don't find them again to begin with. Unless prosthetics are the same as finding something. But that's a different kind of loss, isn't it? I think so. Hmm, I wonder. Wonder what? Oh, man. <clears throat> You've been caught. Emmy seems to have snuck up on Rin and me, though Rin doesn't seem especially surprised, which is itself unsurprising, I suppose. Rin manages to sit herself up right quite expertly, drawing her upper body forward and using her momentum to right herself. Your leg. How's it feel? That earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. Not wor worrying about. By the way, um, I take Rin's suggestion as like literally the game telling me that's how you should deal with uh Emmy, so this is literally the game giving you hints on what you should choose in later on. 
Let's continue. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. Amy pouts like I just told her she's been grounded. He worries too much. It's not a big deal, just a little soreness. I try to resist rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then you should have no problem seeing him, right? Amy narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he put you up to us? Well, maybe a little, but that's not the point. I would have reminded you to see him anyway. It would be terrible to see you really hurt and not doing anything about it. That would make it worse, and I don't want to see you hurt, you know. Call me crazy, but I kind of prefer to see you happy and healthy. Which, with each statement, Emmy's frown fades a little more until eventually she's grinning a bit a little slyly. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then I guess I'll have to see him. Otherwise, he'll keep worrying. Then I'll never hear the end of it, right? That's right. I'll keep bugging you about it. And that might put a damper on our dates. How's the food, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Abby. How's your day, Hisao? Talk to the nurse. <laughs> Hisao, I think I'm ready to go all the... Talk to the nurse, Emmy. <laughs> See? It doesn't work that well. I make a of my high pitch rendition of her own voice and gives me an affectionate show. My voice isn't that high, jerk. I thought it was pretty accurate. Emmy and I stare at Rain for a while before I burst into laughter. Emmy crosses her arms and huffs, mock offended. You're both jerks. Such a vile cuck luminous from you, young woman. I'm stunned that you would call me, of all people, a jerk. Honestly, I just, I don't know what to think. Emmy sticks her tongue out at me. You ass. So, Rin, how's the art club these days? Rin, seemingly as surprised by the sudden change of topic as I am, takes a minute to think before answering. I believe it was okay. it is okay, although Nomiya keeps telling me to work harder, but I don't think he understands my methods. He always struck me as slightly creepy. Rin ponders this statement for a while. I never really notice. But I don't pay much attention to him most days, so maybe that's why. How often do you meet? Think you can join his out? What? Nah. I've already decided to join a club. Really? Which one? Well, it's not really much of a club, to be honest. Oh? You joined the tea club? No, I, uh, joined the science club, I think. Emmy looks highly confused. We have a science club? Um, no, not really. It's just me. Hisao, that's not a club. That's sitting in your room reading books. No, I mean, it's just me and Muto. I'm just the only student so far. Muto, really? A thought strikes her. Oh, is that what you were talking about yesterday? Your meeting with Muto? Yeah, that was our first meeting, I guess. Emmy giggles. Nerd. Hey, I can't help being clever. You know, I could have used your help years ago. You should have had your heart attack earlier in life, Hisao. I laugh and then, then <laughs> I laugh and then realize this is probably one of the rare times I've laughed about my heart attack. Hindsight. Yeah. The ring of the bell ends our conversation. Hmm. Guess we better go. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Rin. You too. Rin apparently begins to doze off, so Emmy gives her a sharp bump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to go to class. I disagree. But maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. Changing location is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Neither Emmy or I are asking what it is. As we arrive at my classroom, Emmy gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway, Rin in tow. I enter the class. I, en I turn to enter the classroom to be met by the duo of Shizune and Misha. Misha seems to be fighting a lot, losing battle to keep 
from breaking into a fit of giggles while she translates she's in his latest rant. While we are pleased and I thrilled to see how well you managed to make new friends and forge friendships, and with such a cutie too, Hit Chan, I think the last part was probably Misha. We nevertheless feel compelled to politely remind you that public displays of affection are strictly forbidden. Really? That's a disappointing, Shit Chan. By section 8 of Code of Conduct laid out in the student, count, student handbook. In this case, however, ignorance of the law may be our excuse as we are feeling lenient. And the paperwork required to furnish the boat of you would only add to this already mountainous volume of work which, are, which confronts us, the sole members of the student council. And besides, you two are adorable together. Therefore, consider this a formal warning, and please refrain from such displays in the future. At least when she's in, I can see you, Hei Chan. <laughs> At least when she's in, it sees you. <laughs> so, like, you know, you know, um, she doesn't really care, man. <laughs> the whole spiel is so patently ridiculous that I can't help but reply in the same pompous manner. Well, I, for one, feel enlightened. I apologize profusely for my rash actions and will strive to contain my baser impulses which I fear impel me towards such inappropriate displays of public affection. It is hardly my wish to burden an already overworked student council with such petty matters and will do my best to make your lives easier in this matter in the future, at least when she's in this watching. The last line is delivered with a wink to Misha. Finally loses control of her laughter. <laughs> well said, Hitchan. Chucking a little myself, we enter the classroom. Class is un uneventful, and after the final bell rings, I find myself alone with Muto again. So, it looks like we've all assembled for the second meeting of the science club. Or is it the first? What do you think? Should we count yesterday as a meeting? Well, we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? That seems like club business, so we can safely call yesterday a meeting. Muto smiles in the usual stilted and awkward way. I wonder if the muscles in his face are just not shaped correctly to let him smile naturally. You really do have a knack for this, I think. Lo logical, logical thought processes, that is, that is, I guess so. A scientist speaks with authority. Hisao, and as I hear this, yes I do. When the world wants to know how it works, we tell it. Even if we all, if all we got is, de is a decent hypothesis. But we must, sound cert we must sound certain anyway, because we're the authorities on the subject, right? <coughs> he chuckles to go along with his awkward smile at his awkward choke. I'm doing my best not to grimace but I don't think I'm being too successful. That's entirely false, of course. We know, all, we, know a lot for sh we know a lot, sure, but nobody's an expert on how the world works. If only because nobody can be sure, with no certainty, there are no experts. But we like to pretend, sometimes. There's some things we can be certain of, right? Yes, but no. We know gravity's there, for example. To illustrate, Muto picks up a pencil and drops it. See? Still there. But it's good to check every now, every once in a while. That's why you still see researchers mucking about with gravity. We're pretty sure we know how it works, but there's always a chance that something isn't how we think it is. So you check and check and check. That's science in a nutshell, Hisao. The whole time I'm listening, feeling rather spellbound. Muto seems to be passionate about this stuff. I think. It's hard to tell sometimes. How the world works. How humans work. How the universe works. All these questions to be answered. And depending on what I go into, maybe I could even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think that's a real priority for me. Besides, as we start discussing the book we, he gave me yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that than my heart condition. <coughs> Before we, before we even realize it, an hour has gone by. Well, let's call this meeting over for now, okay? 
We'll have another meeting tomorrow or、um, the day after. Consider this for a moment. Call it the day after. We got a lot of grading to do. Okay, see you then. As I exit the classroom, I realize I don't really have anything to do tonight. Amy and I didn't make plans, so I guess I'll go to the library. It beats doing homework in my room anyway. The library seems cooler than the rest of the building, probably to keep the books from getting damaged from by excessive heat and humidity. Books are sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are well, so, are so well worn that the pages are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible for them to be usable, but if you handle them with care, I make my way to the main desk where I spot Yuko busy, busying herself with something or another. She smiles at me as I enter and waves. Hello, Hisao. Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Nothing in particular, I guess. I just didn't really feel like going back to my room. Is all. Yuko nods. Well. If you're unoccupied, maybe you could help me look for something. Sure. What do you need? Yuko brings a finger to her lips and looks around furtively. She seems to be looking for eavesdroppers. Come closer. I take a few hesitant steps forward while she felt feeling distinctly unnerved. Yuko lowers her voice in a confidential whisper. I'm on the trail of the Yamaku cat burglar. The what? Shh. The walls have ears, Sal. Or they might. But listen, those missing books. Remember them? Um. Yeah. Well, they weren't missing. They were stolen. I'm convinced of it. I remember you were saying something of that sort earlier. How do you know? You go even even closer, and if possible, whispers even lower, because I found one of his hiding places. You did what? You could look triumphant. Found one of his stashes. It's under one of the stairwells in the boys' dorms. Three books I've been looking for, all there. I suspected the thief before, but this proves it. So, did you take the back? Did you take back the books? Yuko looks as if I suggested she walk around naked. Are you nuts? He can't know I'm on to him. You might go ground and evade capture. Uh huh. So. What do you need my help with, then? You go cast another glance around the library and leads them closer. You got the spy for me. Spy? Yeah, like when you're in the dorms, you know. Keep an eye for suspicious activity. What kind of suspicious anyway? I mean, Kimji is a pretty suspicious dude, but I wager he barely goes to class and much less sneaks into the library to fill for books. Still, what's in the harm in saying yes? At the very least, it'll get me out of this weird conversation. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. You go straight into the class excitedly. Great. Now, hurry up and talk about something else in case someone comes in. How's the school treating you? Um, pretty well, actually. I've been running into the running in the mornings with Amy Ibarazaki, right? Oh,、uh, yeah. How do you know? I saw you two in the tea house. Remember, I deduced that if you two were going to run with anyone, it would probably it would probably be her. She looks pleased with herself. Impressive. Anyway, yes, we've been running in the mornings, and yeah, um, we kind of started dating. You go clasp her hands together excitedly. Really, that's great. I bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that. You know. I even thought to myself, when you walk into the Shanghai that one time, I wonder if that kid will wind up with one of those girls. Really, Yuko doesn't seem to notice my somewhat weirded out tone and nods affirmatively. Yep, I could tell that you'll wind up with one of them. You know, I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Boys, their expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Huh? I'm sure that's not true. Oh, it's true. I met this guy once. We got along really great, but it turns out, it turned out he was younger than me, and that was kind of weird, but not terribly so. What was really weird 
was that he disappeared one day and I have not seen him since then. Huh, that does seem kind of odd. Doesn't it? I hope it wasn't something I did. I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm sure it wasn't. I intended to try and calm her down further, but the both of us jumped in surprise at the ring, suddenly coming from my pocket. Yuko sighs to steady herself as I pull my phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for indirectly causing the incident. Emmy, what's up? Oh, thank God. I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this number would work or whether you would pick up and I can't. Whoa there, Emmy, slow down. What's wrong? <clears throat> There's a pause on the other side of the line, during which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Something's got her terribly agitated and starting to agitate me. Can you just... Can you just stop... Can you stop by? Like now or shortly after now? I really, really need to talk to you. There's a tone of pleading in the last sentence that I don't think I've ever heard from her. Of course, I'll be right there. Hold on, steady, okay? In my increasingly agitated state, I've apparently started saying things that don't make sense. Okay, I'll be okay. See you soon. I press the button to end the call before slipping the phone back into my pocket. I apologize for Yugo for running off and run off. Perhaps at some point I would have stopped to think about the time or how suspicious it looks for a guy to enter the girl's storm, storm at this hour. I said right now I'm just concerned with getting to Emmy and finding out what's wrong and how I can help her. I knock on the door and greet it with a subdued, Come in. Something is very, something is very wrong. As I stare at the scene before me, Emmy's there, yes, but she's in a wheelchair, and her legs are missing. I glance around the room and see them sitting on the corner, looking like they've been thrown there. Emmy responds to my entrance with a loop-sided grin, that is both surprised to see me and completely, utterly heartbroken. Hi, Kasau. It looks like she's been crying, but as she was, she stopped now. I noticed that I'm a little out of breath. I've been taking the stairs two at a time in order to get here. My heart doesn't seem to mind the strain, though. I feel the happy fact away for, for later consideration. Like, when I'm not staring somewhat dumbstruck at my girlfriend in the wheelchair, realizing that I still have not responded to her greeting, my brain lurches into gear. Emmy, what happened? Guess I should have listened to you, Hisao. My legs got a nasty infection. I'm not allowed to run on it for at least a couple of weeks. She gives a bitter slap that should have come, shouldn't be coming from her. Hmm. Can't even walk in it. I could have used a crutch and cut one of my legs, but I didn't see the point. Why hop? You can't run in one leg. At least this way. I can still, I don't know, roll fast or something. It, yeah, that's good, right? My awkward attempt to look on the bright side seems appreciated, but not really effective. Emmy shrugs again. It's just... Kind of a nuisance. I mean... We can't even eat up on the route now. No wheelchair access. Yeah, but that's not a big deal, right? I mean, we can still eat together, and that's an important thing. The loose eye grin again. It hurts the look. I suppose so, yeah. But like I said, it's a nuisance. I mean, I haven't really used a wheelchair in, she thinks, for a minute. Maybe seven years? Or something like that, anyway. A long time. I'm afraid but I'm a bit out of practice. Well, fortunately, it's only temporary, right? Amy nods. Oh yeah, of course. It's not like I've lost them permanently but it's a pain to ass all the same and not sympathetically sympathetic sympathetically <laughs> sympathetically there's not much else i can do after all what am i gonna do say i told you so although i did tell her to get the legs looked at but by the time i noticed it it was too late anyway do you need help with anything or that is can i help with anything Amy shakes her head, and there is a bit of her usual grin back. 
Nah, I can manage fine by myself. Although, if you want to help me over to my bed, it would save me the trouble of rolling over there myself. I blush in spite of myself. I mean, giggles. You're such a prude, Hisao. I'm not a prude. I just wouldn't want to take advantage of a young woman such as yourself. It's ungentlemanly. This guy, man. I wheel Emmy's chair to her bed and easily scoop her up and deposit her there. She quickly sorts herself out and sits on the side. She's actually a little heavier than she looks. It would be rude of me to observe this out loud, of course. Man, you're kind of... He <laughs> fuck! He literally just thought about not saying it, but he literally just says it, man. Amy hits me with a pillow. Ass. Just saying is all. Must be all that running. At the mention of running, Amy's grin falters slightly. Well... <laughs> well, I guess I won't have to worry about that for a bit, huh? Maybe I'll lose some weight. That's what you... That's what you do to lose weight, right? Cease physical activity? I'm pretty sure that's what the nurse would recommend. Speaking of which, are you still going to be are you going to still be showing up in the mornings? I'd hate to run the Ah shit. I mean sudden interjection more dis disquieted mutter muttering than anything too profane causes me to look over in shock. She's leaning forward, trying to cover the fact she's crying by covering her eyes with my with a hand. Of course the Sadie's sobbing makes it pretty obvious she's crying. Hey, I'm sorry. Forget I said anything, okay? I place a hand gesture around her and pull her close. I can think of nothing else to say or do. How do you comfort someone who's just lost her legs again? I mean, you me in a hug and stays that way for a while. Sorry. I'm pretty bad at this whole comforting thing, I guess. Don't say that. I'm fine, really. Her voice is slightly muffled by my chest. <coughs> I pat her head reassuringly. That's spirit, right? You'll get through this fine, I know. Besides, I'm here to help you, remember? Amy lifts her head and stares at me with tear-stained eyes. Can you? Can you really? She's grinning loop-sidedly, and something sparks in her gaze. I can't tell if I'm being mocked or not. Of course. I mean, sure, you're a bit head. Ah. My witty comment is cut off by a sudden press of Emmy's lips on me. I caught off guard and am rewarded by hitting my head on the wall behind her bed. Ow! Emmy pulls back, trying to look concerned rather than she's about to laugh. Are you okay? Sorry. I rub my head ruefully and grin back at her. Caught me off guard there. Is that going? Is that going to be a habit? Am I going to be lectured by Shizune and Misha more? At the mention of the duo, Emmy giggles. Honestly, those two. If I didn't know why, I'd be utterly confused as to why she hangs around with someone so bossy. Which one are you talking about? You know exactly which one. Misao, Misha's hardly bossy. So what's the reason then? Huh? The reason why Misha hangs with around Shizune. Amy waves my question off with a smile. No idea. I see. Anyway, you seem to be forgetting the original question, don't you? Oh yeah, I guess I am. You wouldn't mind giving a guy a little warning, would you? Otherwise, I'm liable to wind up with a concussion. I emphasize the point by rubbing the back of my head. Amy giggles madly. You could wear a helmet. Some kids here do, you know. Or I could just take revenge. I grab a pillow from beside me and whack Emmy over the pillow. Emmy topples over the bed and lands on the floor with a thump. Her arms promptly reappear on the bed and she manages to pull herself back up. She really has a surprising amount of strength in that little body. Her face is turned downward and away from me, making me think I might have accidentally hurt her. Emmy, you okay? You didn't hurt hit your... A hand shoots up and grabs my collar. She pulls me in a sharp tug, and her face is now barely an inch away from mine as she grins cheeko cheekily. Emmy? She grabs me. She gives me a sharp headbutt, our foreheads making a quite a loud thud. Ow, man. 
I sit back and rub my now sore for sore head as Emmy smirks victoriously. How's that for revenge? No fair. You can't take revenge for revenge. For someone missing most of her legs, Emmy's surprisingly agile. I swipe at her. She deadly rolls out of the way and lands and lands a hit with her pillow. Of course the odds are against her. I can stand off for starters. Oof. Oh nice. We're in this kind of scene, if you know. What is this smug, man? <laughs> I like that smug. Guess I can't, after all. Amy seems to effectively trip me up and is now sit sitting primly astride on me as I lay on my back. I'm not even sure how she managed it, though. Managed it. I win! Her eyes twinkle mischievously. I've been thoroughly defeated and by a girl that's perfection on my size at that. Then again, being defeated doesn't seem quite so bad. And just being, posi being positioned over my waist isn't something that I or my body can easily can ignore easily. I open my list to speak, but Emmy's head darts downwards before I can get so much a word out. I give no resistance as she presses her mouth to mine. Not that I'd want to. This is different somehow. She pulls back, lifts at my lower lip, and really and reinitiates the embrace. Her tongue darts inside my mouth, exploring. I can feel a warmth spreading through my body as my heart begins to beat faster. My heart, my mind starts to go foggy, and I become vaguely aware of my hand traveling up Emmy's blouse. Me gasses as I reach a breast, and then there is a giggle, and then I stare up at the grinning Emmy. Told ya. That makes my second win now. What? That doesn't count. You use your feminine wiles. All's fair in love and war, I guess. War, right? Ha! Huh. You're even blushing. I didn't know you were a blusher, Hitao. You were blushing too, you know. Probably because of your brutish ways. Even I've got to admit, this is a stupid thing to say to a woman who is currently straddling me and have, has been up until a few seconds ago playing console hickey hockey with me approved am i well then let's see who blushes first shall we i'm not sure whether the tone of her voice terrifies or arouses me but that question is quickly right in the motion of practice ease she peels her blouse off and tosses his tosses it carelessly aside. Her bra and skirt quickly follow it onto the ground. Or Emmy. Ha! I fight the urge to blush. It's a rather hard task. Piss out. Escalation, is it? My own shirt follows suit. Albeit with some difficulty thanks to my position. Emmy mock yawns. Emmy. You'll have to try harder than that. Emmy. Ah! My hands gently caress Emmy's bare skin, causing her to shiver. It would seem that my hands are acting on their own again. If our position had let me, I'd probably have finished her undressing for her. I start to say something about Emmy's starting to blush, but both of us are very rapidly reaching the edge of something fairly holding us back. Conversation grinds to a halt, and I feel my arms losing energy. Neither of us, however, is prepared for the sudden new sensation. An indescribable heat surges through me, coming from both myself and it seems Emmy as well. With one hand on my chest to steady, myself, uh, steady herself, and another holding mine to make sure that I can't have my way with her body again, she looks quite pleased with herself. Then, then, after a moment's hesitation, she moves. She moves again, and again. As she moves, Emmy's breath hitches. My breath is starting to come faster and more ragged as well. Emmy's body shivers and shudders against mine, and I can feel her starting to lose her balance. It must be harder for her to keep steady because she's missing her legs. I steady her as best as I can, cupping my hands around her backside. It's firm and taut. Nice. <laughs> Makes sense, considering how much she runs. The potential power in those muscles make them flex as she responds to my touch. What I failed to take into account is the fact that my attempt to study Emmy kind of slides her forward, and well, it feels amazing. 
Your panties slide easily against my trousers, and it doesn't take us long to figure out a rhythm. But Emmy refuses to keep to it, going now fast, now slow, now pausing for what feels like an eternity. I'm not sure whether she's doing this to toy with me, or if it is to make her feel better, but I'm well past caring. The heat between us is growing more intense, and I can't hold back a gas. The noise only seems to drive Emmy along. I begin to punctuate her movements with my own, which causes her modest breasts to bounce in time with my mo movements. Her breasts, her breath, <coughs> her breath begins to come faster as we continue. My own breathing becomes equally quick. When her eyes close, her lips purse unexpectedly. I just manage to lift myself up for a few moments, our mouths seeking one another and her chest sliding against mine as our sweet sweat mingles. As I flop back down, my trousers are soaked with sweat. I would take them off if it didn't mean stopping what we're doing. And I don't want to stop what we're doing, stop this growing pleasure, this tickling in the back of my brain. Emmy sliding faster and faster, panting heavier, her mouth seemingly unable to convey what she's feeling. Her body, on the other hand, is doing a fine job. Suddenly, she moves a little more erratically as my own breath hitches in my throat, ending in a final desperate thrust that sends me over the edge into a surging feeling I didn't know existed. My mind blanks, filled with white noise. And I succumbed to the feeling of climax. For a few seconds, everything else in the room falls away, except for the amazing feeling of Emmy and I together. And then it passes. The white noise clears, and I am left staring up into the eyes of the girl atop of me. For a few minutes, neither of us speaks. The sound of our breathing fills the air, our chest heaving for the experience. She eventually reluctantly shifts off me and sits against the wall. I join her. Emmy. So, did I blush? By the way, the entire time, they were just like dry humping. <laughs> and they came from it. Very nice. Let's continue. So, I didn't notice, did I? Emmy shrugs, still breathing a little heavily. Emmy. Didn't notice either. So, well, maybe we should... Oh man, oh, Red enters the room. How awkward, man. <laughs> Rin, I need to use your window. My first instinct is to hide, but I but then I realize that I'm still utterly exhausted and sitting next to a topless Emmy, so there's no running away. Rin's eye spa passes over Emmy and me and focus on the window. There was a cloud, Rin. There was a cloud. Emmy, a cloud? Rin nods. Rin, I was watching it from my window, but it didn't stay on my window. So I need to use your window. Emmy shifts a little, causing me to cough in order to cover cover a, cover up a giggle of my own. Emmy, how long do you need the window for? We're, uh, busy. This time, I can't contain my laughter. Rin ignores both me, both Emmy and me, and peers out the window. Her shoulders slump and she looks disappointed. Hmm. Rin, it changed into something else. Disappointing. Emmy is having a tr is having trouble keeping a straight face. Emmy, sorry to hear that, Rin. Could we have a little privacy now, please? Rin shrugs as if to say, "Can you?" and hooks her foot around the door, pulling it closed behind her. We both dissolve into righteous laughter, unable to deal with Rin's bizarrely timed visit any other way. After our laugh dies down, I look to Emmy and we're both a total mess. Well, Emmy raises an eyebrow. Emmy, well, hiss out, again? Emmy grins and laughs and then she nods. Emmy, we should probably ditch the clothes this time. I think I'm safe to remove the sensor 
image. All right. I'll be right back. 